All right, welcome back to the Queen City Soccer Show. I'm your host, Level Up Luke. We have an exciting special episode today. My partner, Cole, is on vacation, but I had the pleasure of being invited to join the Soccer Sheet uh, Mid-Season Footy Awards uh, selection panel. It's an honor to be alongside Jorge Torres, Kara from Queen's Pitch, and obviously Sam and Rebecca from Soccer Sheet. We had a great conversation. We broke down the nomination process, what that all looks like, how you guys can participate and vote, and who the nominees are. So I'm excited to bring this to you, and make sure you go to SoccerSheet.com. Make sure to subscribe on Substack for free. Uh, You can get a paid membership as well if you feel so inclined and support the great work they're doing. And, you know, until next time, uh, I'm Level Up Luke. We'll bring you guys some more Leagues Cup content, Charlotte FC, Charlotte Independence, uh, Crown Legacy. Uh, We'll continue that coverage. And uh, if this is your first time, make sure to like and subscribe. But uh, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Sam and the Midseason Footy Awards. World debut. All right, everybody. Uh, we are here to talk about the Midseason Footy Awards. Uh, I'm joined by Sam Spencer from Soccer Sheet and a panel of some of the best uh, around, the best in the Charlotte business here, uh, the soccer community. I'm going to turn it over to you, Sam. Uh, can you tell us about the Midseason Footy Awards and, and what do we got going on? Absolutely. Well, uh, thanks for the opportunity here, Luke. And uh, I definitely want to thank and point out everybody who's on the call with us this morning for uh the nominations panel to go through the nominations and pick uh who ended up on your footy awards ballot so uh first we've got jorge uh who many of you know as a uh photographer here in the area um who is at every match and um you've you've seen his work all around uh the charlotte fc ecosystem hello to jorge what's going on guys how are y'all Feeling good, feeling great. Um, next, we have uh, another photographer, uh, Rebecca, who shoots for a soccer sheet. Hello, Rebecca. Hey, y'all. Uh, and finally, uh, from the Queen's Pitch, we have Kara, one half of an amazing podcast combo who uh, we might be meeting the other half in just a little bit. Hello, Kara. Hi, everyone. Thanks for letting me join. Awesome. Well, um, so the format here, I'm going to go through the nominations really quick and um, allow, you know, anybody who was on the panel to speak to anyone who really sticks out or is an inspirational soccer player for you. So first off, the fun ones, many of you have seen this, the ballot is going to be open, um, let's say until uh, Sunday, uh, midnight on Sunday, August 4th. And the Two categories here for the first questions um, are the best Carolina soccer story of 2024 and the Carolina Ascent hometown hero, the person who you're most looking forward to playing for the Carolina Ascent when they kick off their season on August 17th at American Legion Memorial Stadium. Um, So first off, the best Carolina soccer stories that were nominated. Asheville City SC wins the USL2 Southern Conference Championship. Uh, Charlotte FC's Nianjo brothers rise through the ranks together. Patrick Ajumang becomes Charlotte's go-to striker. Uh, The Carolina Ascent brings pro women's sports back to Charlotte after 17 years. Clay Dimmick transcends what was supposed to be a career-ending injury uh, to stay on as the captain for the independents. Charlotte FC Academy U17s reach the MLS next national finals. Uh, Chitru Adunze wins the MLS Next Pro Goalie Wars, and Carolina Core brings pro soccer to the triad, um, also the home of Charlotte FC's Grant Bronico. Um, so any of those stick out to anybody that uh, somebody wants to talk on? Yeah, I can start off maybe chronologically. Um, in the preseason, uh, I was able to sit down with Clay Dimmick from Charlotte Independence and talk about his uh, spinal injury. He actually had a um, career ending uh, spine back injury uh, towards the end of last season. And um, it was kind of, he gradually noticed that he was losing movement and losing feeling 
throughout his limbs. Um, when it was diagnosed, uh, no pro athlete has ever come back from this type of injury. He got a new uh, novel surgery to uh, fuse the, the two uh, vertebrae in a way that would allow him to potentially come back. And he trained and worked hard for the better part of a year and has been a, an inspirational player and captain for Charlotte Independence this season. So that was a really cool story. Awesome. Um, any else before we move to Carolina Ascent? So, uh, Rebecca, do you want to take the uh, Carolina Ascent Hometown Hero nominations? I, I, I saw a big yes, but she's busy. Uh, so the Carolina Ascent Hometown Hero, uh, which player are you most looking forward to seeing play? Uh, we have Isabella, Frank, Isabella Franco, Jada McGrew, Jill Aguilera, who um, recently got some NWSL minutes, um, Mia Corbin, and Vicki Bruce. And if you don't know any of them, um, Vicki Bruce is the hometown girl um, Cornelius raised, um, went to high school in the area at Cannon, um, played for both UNC and Davidson, um, and has now traveled across the the world most to Europe and most recently to Australia um, and is now coming back to play in Charlotte. So if we don't have any more Carolina Ascent players, um, let's go to the rest of the ballot. And this is the ballot that will be uh, debuting as soon as this podcast goes up. Um, so first off, we have the 2024 Carolina Soccer Community Leader Award, someone working to improve the soccer ecosystem in the Carolinas. Um, it, this is the longest list. I think this is the longest question out of all of them. We have Becca Mitchum um, from Mint City Collective, Bridget McCall from the Queen's Pitch Podcast, Cliff Wright from the Charlotte Eagles, Dan D'Amico from the Carolina Ascent and Charlotte Independence, uh, David Gussler from Mint City Collective, Joe Labou, the president of Charlotte FC, uh, Lee Hannibal, who does CLT FC Fan TV, Matt Swift, our, our third from Mint City Collective, going to be interested to see the vote split there, uh, and then Mike Umberger from the Mecklenburg Reserves. So, um, Kara, uh, can you tell us anything about Bridget? Yeah, um, Bridget always likes to... Um really support Crown Legacy and the Academy players. She is heavily involved in the soccer scene uh, with her daughter. Um, they, her daughter Lillian plays for multiple um, clubs. And she also likes to um, support when uh, like local community events and things like that. Um, and she's also a voice to um, speak about um, just the, the way the youth are like and women. Um, we feel like their voices are more important, and that's one of the things that we like to highlight on the podcast. But if you know Bridget, she is such a warm and inviting person. Um, she's like never um, not made a friend. So, uh, you know, she, she'd she love to meet you. And uh, I think she just really, she really embodies um, community and connection. Amen to that. Um, um I'll jump in if it's okay and uh, just talk about M Mike Umberger from the Mech Reserves. I had the pleasure of uh, starting to to hang out and tailgate with them last season with Charlotte Independence. They are a hyper local supporters group. So the only team that they're um, actively engaging with is Charlotte Independence. Uh, although some of the members do support the other uh, semi-pro teams in the area, like the the Chaos and um, Anthem Rugby. So uh, being hyper-local and, and kind of a lower-level supporters group does not in any way impact the level of passion, the quality of the tailgates. Um, you know, we might hear from Carolina Reaper a little bit later, but he's another big active member. Um you know, we got David, who's the president of the group, but Mike Umberger is definitely the heart and soul of the Mech Reserves. You can see him on a lot of the promo stuff for Charlotte Independence. And uh, just like Kara was saying about Bridget, you know, it, it's a super welcoming group. And 
you know, I know that Mike would love to welcome people into the Charlotte Independence tailgates in that scene. So I like, I really like seeing him get the recognition in this category. Awesome. And before I forget, um, I do want to point out um, Hector Cortez uh, Sombrero Man was nominated in this category as well. However, uh, because he's the most recent winner of the award um, at the inaugural Footy, Footy Awards, that's why he is not on this list. Um, Jorge, Rebecca, uh, anybody you want to point out? All right, let's move on to favorite local fan 2024. Um, eligible is any Carolina soccer fan who is not employed by a professional team or club. Um, even though with uh, Chico, you know, um, he's on so many advertisements, you would think that he is like the second mascot after Sir Minty. Um, but we have Alicia Leon, uh, Carolina Reaper, uh, a.k.a. Kevin, uh, La Muerte, a.k.a. Chico, uh, Marcy Sierra, uh, Sombrero Man, Hector Cortez, and, um, well, I don't think we have option six. <laughs> um, anybody want to speak to any of those? I'd love to speak to uh, Alicia alone. She brings this energy to soccer. And if you've ever met her, it's like you've known her your whole life. Um, she remembers your name. She knows like who your favorite player is. And you really just kind of need that energy. And she's always excited um, and always has the best gear, honestly. Um, and so I just really want to lift her up. Um, she's she's on Twitter um and she really just like amplifies all of the soccer all over charlotte um and so i just wanted to make sure to kind of give her a shout out on here and fingers crossed she wins i actually want to give her a shout out because uh leak uh luke leaked this category uh to twitter and alicia's immediate reaction was anybody but me please do not vote for me <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I did leak this category because uh, it's not fair, and I don't like you for putting this in here, uh, because every single one of these people is amazing, and I love them, and they're all friends, so I don't know how I could possibly pick somebody in this category. This is by far the strongest category on the poll, in my opinion. Well, I guess it'd be unfair for me to not talk about my my group people, right? Um, Marce is like a good friend of mine, and she has the most. She's one of the most passionate people I've ever been met in my life. Uh, she has a heart of gold, and she can be a little feisty sometimes, but it's for a good reason. You can see her and everywhere, and she's the absolute best. She's a she she helps out with everything, uh, and. She's one of the best for sure for this club and the way she represents it. As well as Hector, but we all know who Hector is. <laughs> all right. Hearing, hearing nothing else, going to favorite 2024 kit. Luckily, this has pictures and visuals. And if you need more pictures and visuals in some of these categories, please ask us. Uh, I'll be happy to add especially players you might not know, but we definitely thought there needed to be pictures for the favorite 2024 kit. Um, and we have Appalachian FC, which is uh, black and very squatchy. Um, it could hide in the woods. Um, we have the Carolina Ascent Coastal kit, which is away, which is a sun, uh, sunrise um, over the Atlantic Ocean. We have the Carolina Ascent Trail Blazer Kit, which looks more like a sunset over the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, Carolina Core Summer Sunset Kit, which is their goalkeeper kit, um, with uh, many different colors that, that aren't the ones you might expect from the Carolina Core Badge. Um, and then the Carolina FC Carolina Kit Explore, uh, which is the new home kit that Charlotte FC put together this year. And probably a good reminder with this one that um, anybody who votes in the Footy Awards um, are entered to win prizes, and our next drawing is going to be for a Carolina Core scarf and a Carolina Core jersey. Yeah, I think we have some really strong kits in the Carolinas. I mean, this year with the Explore kit coming out, kind of starting the uh, the conversation, um, I think it's fantastic. I was just 
up in the Blue Ridge Mountains hiking, and I saw a scene that looked very much like that. Uh, it's it's pretty incredible. And uh, obviously, Carolina Ascent made a big splash with their jersey unveils. Absolutely fantastic. I have a lot of friends who are telling me that they are out there buying Carolina Ascent gear, and uh, I'm I'm excited to see, you know, how they look on the actual pitch. So, um, strong category, very strong. And one plug I have to give for the Carolina Ascent kits, um, you know, a couple of people asked me before the kit reveal if I knew if they they were going to have larger guy sizes. Um, unfortunately, on the NWSL website, only goes up to 2X. Luckily, the Ascent, they have three Xs for us larger people. So thank you very much. I do really want to give a shout out to the Appalachian FC kits. Um, I absolutely love that they have so many local uh, supporters in the area. Um, a lot of local businesses are supporting them. And honestly, I went to Appalachian State University, so I spent a lot of time um, in Boone, North Carolina. Um, and when I made a recent trip, I was able to meet uh, meet the head coach. Amazing person. Um, they have a great store if you ever go up and visit, but honestly, it's just that they have so much support up in Boone and, um, and really able to get the, those like local stores that were able to support. And then they design an amazing kit around it. Um, and so I just want to give a shout out to them. Awesome. Well, uh, moving on to favorite midseason local footballer, 2024, um, I think, after the fan category, this might be the hardest category. Um, so we have, this is the one category where there are eligible players from multiple teams. Uh, so we have Adilson Melanda, Ashley Westwood, Brant Bronico, Clay Dimmick from the Independents, uh, Pachi Polanco from Carolina Corps, and Casey Murphy, uh, U.S. Women's National Team member who plays for the NC Courage. Anybody stand out or, you know, th this is more of a fun category than like most important player. Um, you know, why do you, why do you love to see some of these people play? Yeah. I mean, I think you got to shout out when you talk about local footballers um, that Bram Bronico is an integral part of this community uh, from his time at UNCC being the the motor and you know that midfield presence for charlotte fc this is not you know the best mvp category this is the local footballer and i think he really embodies that spirit um he does the charity event every year at hopfly um the mayor ramp ronico yeah only to my knowledge only two people on that list have beers named after them so and the other ones, the uh, the skipper Westwood and Ashley has been re done a really good job being omnipresent in the community and really, you know, being both on and off the pitch, everything you'd expect a, a skipper to be. Um, and that includes throwing caution to the wind and ignoring the the fact that they're calling dissent more this year. I got to give a shout out to my girl, Casey. I mean honestly uh she's one of two um goalkeepers on the u.s women's roster um she's had 15 clean sheets 15 i don't know another person who has that right now um and also she's played all 14 games so far she's made 41 saves on uh with 56 shots on goal for a 71 percent save percentage 71 i don't know if there's anyone else that has done that and i just think i'm repping for her during the olympics and she always brings that spirit back uh to the courage and so i'm just thrilled to see her on this list awesome well we will uh, pick up the pace um crown legacy mid-season mvp long list here um aaron john um obvious strong contender there um brandon cambridge chitru Adonze, dylan singh um nymphasha and rocket Rideria. 
Any standouts? Well, well, once again, it'd be it'd be rude of me to not give a shout out to my guy Brandon. We all know how close him and I are at this point. Um, just I was able to see how he how you know me and him were we did something together from seeing him in, in, in the walking boot to now <clears throat> how he played for Crown Legacy and then he made made that debut uh last week or so. It's it's you know hard work truly pays off for him and I'm and I'm glad to see him doing good again. Me too. And uh, Brandon, apologies again for knocking that poster on you at the last Footy Awards. I'm sorry. Anybody else before we move to the core? Yeah, um, Aaron John's having a fantastic year. If you guys are not uh, watching Crown Legacy in the audience, I would definitely say, you know, keep Aaron John on your radar. He's kind of the breakout star for them this year. Uh, Dylan Thing has had a great season. Virtuous, obviously, he's playing two levels up on the U.S. national team, the U.S. youth national team. Uh, he's got an insanely bright future. He's a, a rising star. Uh, and then shout out to Kara for, uh, you know, bringing in the Rocket Rita Rita conversation. He plays for the academy team. And the Charlotte U-17 and U-15 teams have been putting in some good work in the Generation Adidas tournament and the MLS Next Cup. So uh, shout out on that. Yeah, and if you want some statistics for this year, uh, maybe for some of those, um, Dylan Singh has five goals and two assists. Um, Aaron John is at seven goals, six assists for the year so far. Um, Nympha and Rocket Riria have been playing um, more on the um, youth national uh, teams and then for Charlotte FC in the uh, academy playoffs. So we've seen more goals from them there, and I don't have those statistics. But, um, yeah, each of them has been a standout. Yeah. And, and then, I, I got to mention, you know, obviously, uh, Shituro Donze won the goalie award championship. So he's the only one here with an actual award. <laughs> so give him the belt. I love it. Well, cool. Well, I'll move on to Carolina Core midseason MVP. And we have Pachi Polanco, um, Ibrahim Kobe, Jacob Evans, Jason Juarez, and Joshua Rodriguez. And I'll I'll take the first one here because um I had a chance to sit down and talk with uh Ibrahim Kobe. Um he is from France, from Ligue 2, um, native French speaker. Um, and luckily, you know, we have Adrian on the soccer sheet team. And so we, we have French translation services whenever we want them. Um, but, you know, Ibrahim was, uh, he, he's just like Melanda uh, is for Charlotte FC. He is a center back force of nature um, who is, you know, really the defensive core, no pun intended. Um, and you know, it's, it's also just, just awesome talking to, to him about a story. Um, imagine, you know, being transplanted from Paris and, uh, now you're in high point. Any other standouts in this category? All right. Well, we will move on to independence midseason MVP. You know, last year, I think uh, Austin Pack was our winner in this category. Um, but um, though he's at the top of the list, I don't know if he'll be the winner this year for midseason because we also have Clay Demick, Gabriel Oberton, uh, Joel Johnson, Joel Johnson, and Juan Carlos Obregon. Um, and that's a pretty stacked field for the independents who are currently second in the USL League One as we tape this podcast. Yeah, they're playing tonight, and they've been – they were actually number one within the past week. It, it just depends on the games played at this point. Um, I'll jump in here just because I go to all these games. Um, Austin Pack looks like he could absolutely repeat as USL one goalkeeper of the year. Uh, so you can't count him out for this award. Clay Dimmick, I already mentioned his uh, amazing comeback story. Uh, Gabriel Overton. Uh, the Frenchman, the, the most experienced veteran player on the team, he is pushing 10 assists on the season right now in all competitions, which is quite frankly insane. Uh, Joel Johnson's having a great year. And then JC Obergon was uh, USL One Player of the Month 
and the t- he's the team's leading scorer. So absolutely stacked field for the Charlotte Independents. Uh, once again, you, you guys got to get out and see this team. They they have a great product at a very affordable price. Uh, the games are a blast. Awesome. Well, um, unless there's anybody else to point out, um, going on encourage midseason MVP 2024. Um, we have four strong contenders here, Ashley Sanchez, Brianna Pinto, Casey Murphy, and Tyler Lucy, who um, I believe all lead were very close in one stat or another for the, the courage. Aside from Olympian Casey Murphy, any other shout outs here? Well, um, between Tyler and Ashley, um, I think they are both the golden boot for the courage right now. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if this is one where offense or defense wins. Uh, North Carolina FC midseason MVP, Evan Conway, Louis Perez. Um, I think a lot of people get that wrong, but Louis is actually from France. Um, o. Alex Anderson and Raphael um, Menzingen. Uh, Menzingen. There we go. Um, so four different picks for North Carolina FC, and I'm going to move on before I can hear some uh, North Carolina FC hate from the hardcore independence fans. All right, listen, um, I, I will give a shout out to Louis Perez. Uh, I did nominate him because I, I did have a chance to sit down and interview him at the soccer tournament. He has a fantastic story, uh, like Kobe's from France and uh, his journey. Also, his little brother also plays for the NCFC team, and they're both just super cool people. So I will say something nice. Um, next, next we have NPSL South. Southeast season MVP. Um, as many of you know, there's the Moonshine Cup between three local NPSL teams, uh, Appalachian FC. It is Appalachian, not Appalachian, by the way. Um, Hickory FC and Charlottetown Hops, who all play in this league. Um, so we have two from Hickory who went the farthest in the uh, division out of all three teams, uh, Diego Fernandez and Jorge Jimenez. And then we have um, Ellie Bacota from uh, Appalachian FC and Jamie Deluzio from the Charlottetown Hops. And then finally, the big one, the last question on the ballot, one that everybody's required to answer, Charlotte FC midseason MVP 2024. Um, so eligible is anyone who played for the first team in 2024 who is still with the club. Um, this is a stacked list that's like choosing your favorite uh, daughter. Um, Adilson Melanda, Andrew Privet, Ashley Westwood, and that's just the A's. Um, Christian Kalina, Lee Lobata, and Patrick Ajiman. Who wants to start on the these six? Because I, I think somebody has an opinion on all of these. I see a big smile on Kara's face. Kara. Sure, I can take it away. Um, I mean, I think one of the ones you have to really highlight here is Patrick Ajumang. He's been asked to be the number nine uh, up at the front, like taking the place of Enzo. Enzo didn't do really well this year. He's gone. And now we have Pat. And Pat, for such a young guy, and this is only like, if you count a total year, he's just kind of reached his year mark now. Um, in this point of the season. So even though he's been on two seasons with Charlotte FC, like he hasn't been featuring for the first team in this type of big, important role until this year. And already at this point in the season, he has seven goals, two assists, and he's been asked to really carry the team in this goal scoring ability. Um, and so that's a really tough job. And so I feel like you have to, you have to have him as an MVP. All right, who wants to take Leo Labata? I'll jump in. Uh, coming over from, you know, my my first love, Celtic. Uh, Leo Labata has had a difficult uh, year or two here with on and off the pitch issues. And he's shown tremendous resilience coming in, playing for Charlotte, 
uh, getting chemistry with a new team. And we see the flashes of, of skill and talent. He's by far the most technically gifted player on the pitch for Charlotte. So he had some goals. He had some assists. And more numbers will come in time. Uh, he's coming off of the European um, calendar. So I think there's some adjustment there. But he is absolutely a steal uh, as a DP for Charlotte. This is a player that I don't think anybody would have predicted would be playing in MLS this season. So uh, shout out to Liel and Celtic, who just uh, beat Man City in Chapel Hill. Love to see it. That also sounds like a shout out to uh, Zoran for uh, you know being persistent and bringing Abada um, over to the MLS. Um, who wants to take Polina? Don't make me call on people. Jorge. I was waiting to do Melanda, but I'll take Kalina. Um he's been he's been insanely good. Just the the ability to he he's risen to the occasion in, in so many uh circumstances and he's been one of the many uh I guess you know like defenders that we've been able to 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 rely on this year and Without many of his saves, we'd be pretty in, in a tough spot. But now we know we, we're pretty confident with him, you know, defending that goal. Awesome. Uh, Westy. So Ashley Westwood being the captain, like, of course, his leadership is fantastic. Um, as if you saw one of the most recent games, like he's first into the fray and, you know, he's not afraid to defend anyone on the team and he's usually the first person in line to do that so you have to appreciate that um, willingness to put himself in those situations and just be a leader not only on the pitch but uh, you know with with his teammates and as far as like statistics on this season he's had a fantastic year um, he's had two goals four assists and he leads the team in progressive passing up the pitch um, so I can't wait to see if he scores some more this year. So he has to be a favorite. Awesome. Um, well, Jorge, I'll give you Melinda right now. Oh, good. Um, I guess you, if you if you want to be honest, you could put it on the entire back line as if you want to say back line MVP. But if we had a if we had to pick one player, I think it would uh, we'd have to do it to to Dilson. Um. Without his communication and 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 setting people up and and managing that back four that we have, we wouldn't have the defense that that you know the entire league knows us for. And he's he's been that catalyst and that crucial person back there, um, organizing everything for us. So you know, big shout out to him. Yeah, and I mean, just it brings to mind in fantasy football. There's a, a term called a, a handcuff when you have a, a running back duo. And twisting the meaning slightly here, I think Melanda and Privet, like Jorge was saying, are are a handcuff. It's the two of them together working as a team, uh, supporting one another. I call Andrew Privet the Terminator. He's the the team leader in minutes. But every time there's an opportunity or a breakaway or something going on on his side of the pitch, he shuts it down and eliminates it. So I know Melanda is going to get all the love here, but I just want to give a shout out to Andrew Privet. I don't know. Um, I will say, you know, is I did the first profile on Adilson and was really honored to get to know him. Like, I had a feeling like he was going to be a big thing. And this year, um, I don't know what happened, but, you know, we I, I did a profile of uh, Ashi for Queen City Nerve and um lo and behold like two weeks later he was the nine uh and he was going to be the guy throughout the season um so you know I have had a lot of time to talk to those two and and really get to know them but part of me says that the the mvp for me um he got my editor's award in the footy awards last year and that was ashley westwood um because you know just having somebody who's a presence um in that locker room and Honestly, uh, in terms of set pieces, in terms of play creation, um, somebody who is 
vital to the organization on and off the pitch. Um, you know, I, it's like, uh, you know how important Scott Arfield was in the locker room, but he really didn't get a chance to show it that much on the pitch. And Ashley is literally the best of both worlds. And, uh, um, you know, this is going to be, I haven't decided yet. I haven't cast my vote yet, but this is going to be a hard one for me. Well, um, with that, I think we, we've wrapped up the recap of the awards. Uh, I'd love to just ask you, Sam, as far as the footy awards and having the event uh, for last season, what what do we have to look forward to with this contest? Um, you've mentioned some giveaways. Uh, what does the timetable look like? What are the rules? Uh, give me just kind of a rundown of how does this all work? Absolutely. So um, we'll have one ballot ending on Sunday and one ballot beginning as soon as the podcast is up. You'll be able to find it at soccersheet.com. Um, the final ballot um, is going to be open until Wednesday, August 14th, um, hopefully giving us enough time to get some awards um, to the players uh, during the League's Cup break. Um, not going when they make it farther, but in case they don't, they'll have a, a little time off and hopefully we'll be able to take, it, take advantage of that slightly. Um, so we're um, patiently waiting to see what happens between Philadelphia and Cruz Azul. And once we know more what the schedule is going to look like. Um, I think we'll we'll have a smaller get together. It won't be like last year, but uh, hopefully everybody will be able to raise a pint and some of our winners will be able to join us. Love it. And where can people find uh, this this um, voting ballot? Um, at soccersheet.com. If, if you click on any of the stories, um, but especially there, there will be a story that goes up that says, Soccer Sheet Footy Awards vote. Um, any of those stories, you can click and find the ballot. Fantastic. Uh, you guys can find Soccer Sheet on Twitter, aka X. You can find them on Threads, Instagram, wherever you get your social media. Thank you guys so much. This is an amazing panel. Uh, I'm very grateful to be a part of it. And, um, you know, QCS Pod, I, I know my partner Cole is, is out of town on vacation right now, uh, but he sends his, his love as well. And um, yeah, fantastic. We're going to follow up with you guys and uh, keep the, the listeners and viewers posted as we uh, get the votes in and, and we get some winners for the mid-season footy awards. Uh, Sam Spencer, Rebecca, Jorge, Kara, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Happy voting.